equipment that uh, use heat exchangers to refrigerate the fluid of that equipment. The generators. The generator is a diesel or gasoline engine connected to a big alternator. Okay, the generators, the, the main engines, of course, uh, the air conditioning equipment. Yes, in the air conditioning equipment, you have a circulation of salt water, circulation of salt water around the pipes with, uh, with Freon. We are going to study uh, later uh, in the book of our, uh, air condition, that system. Yes, the, uh, the air condition equipments, the marine air condition equipments, they have a heat exchanger to decrease the temperature of the refrigerant in the system. Salt water, circulation of salt water, yes. In the air condition equipment, we have exactly the same. We have a, a seacock, we have a strainer, we have raw water pump, we have, ah, for that reason, the life of those equipment depend how is corro corroded the equipment. This is the boat, this is the hull of the boat. This is the hull of the boat. And we are going to install uh, internally in the block and the head, we only have circulation, circulation, circulation of coolant, circulation of coolant, circulation of coolant, the coolant here, the thermostat is located here, and uh, this is the, the ro uh, this is the coolant pump or fresh water pump or circulating pump. Yeah, the coolant pump circulate the coolant, the coolant goes outside, the coolant goes outside into the radiator outside of, of the boat. The radiator is submerged in the salt water, this radiator, the coolant circulate over there and return, return and once again circulate internally in the block and once again goes out. In other words, in the exhaust, in this type of system, the exhaust, I don't need heat exchanger. I don't need heat exchanger because, uh, because uh, my radiator is located outside of the boat. When you check outside through the exhaust pipe, you only have, you only have gases, smoke, gases, and you don't have salt water coming out. Why this is excellent for the environment? Suppose that the engine, the engine is using an improperly fuel, a fuel with too much level of sulfur and too much level of nitrous and phosphorus. Suppose that the fuel is not the appropriate fuel. Okay, that engine produces too much nitrous oxide, sulfur oxide, phosphorus oxide. What happens when those oxides are mixed with the salt water? Ah, oh, produce sulfuric acid, nitric acid, carbonic acid, all of those lethal uh, acids. What is uh, the secret in that system? The secret is this radiator, the, the, the radiator located outside. Okay, we are going to check what happened in that system. Uh, this is an, another good picture about uh, this system. This closed circuit cooling system eliminates the need for inboard heat exchanger, of course, and no, no raw water pumps and no strainers. And uh, also the maintenance is too simple. And uh, internally, if you check the engine room, the engine room is clean, no corrosion. The, uh, this is, a, this is the, in my opinion, uh, the most important part of this system. This radiator is located outside. This radiator is located outside in contact with the, with the salt water. Okay, and uh, you don't need raw water pump because you don't, you, you don't need circulate raw water pump internally. But uh, you need the coolant pump, the, the fresh water pump. You need this, this pump, no? The, 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 the coolant pump. The coolant pump circulate the coolant internally in the block and send the coolant outside to the radiator. And this is a, this is a, a better a better picture about the, uh, the the kill cooling system. If you see uh, the piece of zinc at the end, this piece of zinc uh, is used to protect this copper alloy. Right now we are going to talk about this copper alloy and special alloy. Wonderful! It is an alloy that is practically zero corrosion, zero corrosion. And, uh, and uh, look, this is the, 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 the true hole that uh, we are going to do in the hole in order to install uh, this element. In this system, I only have circulation of coolant. The coolant starts in this point, and then the coolant continues over there, the coolant goes outside, circulate through the radiator. This is the coolant, this is the coolant, and the coolant returns over there, 
return over there and enter here the thermostat housing and once again continue 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 and return over there this is basically the path of the cooler okay i don't have i don't have a circulation of salt water excellent And uh, look at this, this is the expansion tank, the metallic expansion tank, and the expansion tank, you remember, is connected with the, with the coolant reservoir. Okay, I open the radiator cap, the radiator cap here in the expansion tank, or here, and I found it that uh, the color of the coolant is brown. This is because uh, the coolant is mixed with salt water. In this system, it's very common added a couple of filters. A couple of filters. Uh, those filters are very important because those filters are water separators. Remember that uh, the density of, uh, of uh, the coolant is higher than the density of, uh, of the water. Uh, if you have a, a coolant mixed with water, uh, the water goes in the bottom and the coolant on top. And uh, it's easy to identify if you have those water separators, if you have a, a concentration of water, and immediately you need to stop the engine and uh, check the radiator externally, probably remove the radiator, send to the machine shop, and after that put it back the radiator. And yeah, the, 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 the strainers are very, very important in order to verify the migration of salt water into the coolant. And, uh, and you have another, another uh, filter here. This is for bypass. Uh, this is when, when, when we need to isolate the system and, uh, and, uh, and do the service uh, on, the, on the external radiator, on the heat exchanger. Uh, other important uh, uh, function of uh, the strainers is verify the color, the color of the coolant. It's, uh, it's important that uh, you keep clear uh, those filters in order to check if the coolant is moving if the coolant doesn't have bubbles, remember the enemy of the majority of the fluids is the bubbles, the air, and uh, identify that the, the salt water is not mixed with the coolant. Uh, this is other point of, uh, of inspection that you need added in your list when you are inside of the engine room. The material of those external radiators is, is once again, is a copper nickel alloy. Copper nickel alloy 5000 series. It's 5,100, uh, 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 is series 5,000. A lot of uh, alloys, series 5,000s are copper nickel. This is a, an expensive alloy with high, high, high content of nickel. High content of nickel. High, high content of nickel. For that reason, in the next episode, uh, we are going to study the, the refrigerants, the coolants, and uh, we are going to analyze uh, the sample of coolant when you send to the laboratory uh, the coolant to analyze the coolant uh, we are going to check what happened with the concentration of different metals and minerals uh, in order to identify where should be located the problem the, the problem of overheating that i have in my engine actually and yes and and the the, the welding in between those pipes is with silver brass silver brass And uh, there are other, yeah, the copper nickel, the copper nickel units are welded with silver brass. This is for copper nickel. And uh, there are all uh, external radiators like this in aluminum, in a special alloy of aluminum. And of course, the, the, the welding in those alloys should be with pure aluminum. Yes, there are uh, external radiators for keel cooling system in aluminum and external radiator for keel cooling system fabricated in copper nickel alloys, okay?